Hey everyone, today we are going to be going over the Neo 3 upgrade. We will talk about what improvements and features are now in Neo 3 and have been added to the Neo ecosystem. If you want to skip to any part in this video, you can hit the timestamps down below in the video. But first, we are going to go over a brief history of Neo. So, first of all, before Neo, there was AntShares. AntShares first started in 2014. AntShares was a smart contract platform that ran off of the Byzantine Fault Tolerance system. This new system was something different from that of Ethereum, but it was made to have an efficient smart contract blockchain system. AntShares in 2017 was later rebranded to NEO, which is as we know it today, or some may refer to it as NEO2. What makes the NEO ecosystem so unique is that it is a two token system. Unlike Ethereum, where the fees and the underlying value token are all under the same roof, with NEO, you have the two token system, one being NEO as the governance token and two being gas, which is used as the currency within the NEO ecosystem. And later in 2018, it was founders Eric Zhang and Da Hong Fei that mentioned of a NEO 3 upgrade that they have been working on. This upgrade was to bring plentiful new features to make NEO the number one all-in-one blockchain solution. As I said, just a brief overview of the history of NEO, you could go way deep into that rabbit hole and there's a lot to learn there, but the main focus of today's video is NEO 3 and its primary features. So as mentioned earlier, NEO on top of the NEO blockchain is the governing token. There will only ever be 100 million NEO that will ever exist. And NEO, like previous versions of NEO 2 and AntShares, is not divisible. Gas, on the other hand, is divisible and does not have a max cap. In NEO 2, it did have a max cap, but it is important to note that in NEO 3, it does not and which means it incentivizes more use of the gas token to purchase things such as NFTs, which we will get into later. Then there is also the NEP17 token, which is just like your ERC20s from the Ethereum network. The goal of the NEO3 upgrade was to make it the best all-in-one solution. NEO wants to be the number one in every single category to make it the no question best platform to use, develop, and create on. So, to start off, what are the nine things that make NEO such a great all-in-one smart contract platform? Well, we will go over it in details, but briefly, it is interoperability, native oracles, self-sovereign ID, decentralized storage, NEO name service, one block finality, best-in-class tooling, smart contracts, and multi-language support for developers. Starting off with interoperability. NEO is a founding member of the Interoperability Protocol Alliance Poly Network. This means that NEO makes cross-chain interaction as easy as a native transaction on the network. Users or applications or smart contracts on the network can easily send assets or tap to services from other participating networks that are within these poly network bridges. Why this is most important is also because this poly network does not require another token. It is all built in natively to the NEO3 ecosystem. In fact, Poly Network has already transferred $3 billion to the NEO Legacy ecosystem. If I haven't mentioned it yet, NEO2 is also known as NEO Legacy or the previous version before NEO3. This interoperability means that NEO can work with Ethereum, Binance Chain, and other smart contracting platforms. Next, we will talk about NEO's native Oracle service. Contracts that are developed on NEO can invoke the native Oracle contract, which can trigger a data request specifying a target URL and filter. Most importantly, these Oracle nodes are elected through the NEO Council, which will then work together to guarantee that they are truthful and reliable in their results. Having this Oracle system means that these smart contracts that are built on NEO can fetch and manipulate data on the off-chain in an uncensorable, reliable, and tamper-proof manner. And this is huge for smart contracting platforms. 
The self-sovereign identity, also known as Neo ID, brings identification to the Neo platform. The Neo ID system allows users to create and manage decentralized identifiers, which then they can issue claims as a data verifier, or developers can integrate attribute verification into their own applications as required. This means that users who use Neo can then tap into their verified credentials and gain access to applications without ever needing to share personalized data, which means they retain full sovereignty of their data and assets. Next, we will go over Neo Decentralized Storage, also known as Neo FS. Neo FS operates on a free market principle. That means anybody can join the network as a storage node, or anyone can become elected to the ring which participates in network management. If you participate in network management, you can also earn rewards in doing so. This file storage system is customizable. That means anybody that is renting storage can choose where in the world they want to be renting that storage from to limit latency to their users. And also they can define specific disk type requirements so that it suits their needs for file storage. Best of all, this is all native on the Neo3 chain which means developers can tap into this NeoFS network at the code level, not having to worry about the cost of persisting this data on chain. This makes NeoFS an ideal host for web frontends, replacing old centralized hosts. In addition to that, it has its own integrated CDN service. Now we have Neo Name Service, which a lot of you may be familiar with Ether Name Service, and this is a very similar feature but this is natively built into the Neo blockchain. This means you can buy domains directly through a representation of an NFT on the Neo blockchain. Anyone is free to purchase or transfer a Neo domain on the Neo name service at any point. So you can have a domain for your website on Neo storage or Neo FS, or you can just have a name on the Neo name service that can represent your account. And just like any other domain service, there is a complete domain life cycle, including the registry, renewal, resolution, expiration, and permission control on those domains, just like you would have anywhere else. With number six, we will talk about Neo3's one block finality. This one block finality is thanks to DBFT 2.0, which is built upon the old Byzantine fault tolerance system from Neo Legacy. Having this one block finality is huge, to say the least. Like the old DBFT, it requires two-thirds majority agreement between validators called consensus nodes before these new blocks can be committed to the blockchain. That means that the blockchain will never fork. And as soon as a transaction is included on a confirmed block, that transaction is confirmed and finalized and will never be reversed. That means with NEO, users can enjoy one finality block transactions with low fees that happen quickly. As soon as your transaction is included on that block, it is sent, confirmed, and your transaction is done. It is quick, easy, efficient, and it's awesome. With number seven, we are gonna talk about Neo 3's best in class tooling. To work on the developer friendliness of Neo 3 and to take it to the next level, Neo actually teamed up with ex Microsoft veterans to establish the Neo Global Development Enterprise, which is a Seattle based office which is purely focused on the developer experience on the Neo 3 platform. The flagship product for the Neo Global Development Enterprise is the Neo Blockchain Toolkit for VS Code, which allows developers to easily develop private Neo networks, then create, deploy, and interact with smart contracts, which can be coded in any language. As a developer myself who loves me some VS Code, I say that is pretty awesome, as well as the fact that you don't have to learn a new language. It's nice to be able to use one of your favorite languages. Along with that, Neo also boasts many other powerful community tools like built-in SDKs, compilers, 
code examples, as well as resources for a lot of supported languages. Since we are just talking about it, we're gonna go a little bit more detail into the multi-language support, and the last two, number eight and nine, kind of morph into each other. We're gonna talk about multi-language support as well as building smart contracts, which of course is one of the most important things for a smart contract platform. Because of this multi-language support, you can choose a language that you love to work in and immediately go and create a smart contract in that language. That means that developers can write compile and deploy smart contracts that are written in C Sharp, Python, Go, TypeScript, and Java. And after compilation to the standard NEF, also known as Neo Execution Format, these smart contracts can be loaded within the Neo VM, which is Neo's lightweight virtual machine. These new Neo 3 smart contracts provide a variety of improvements for developers. Some examples can include the new dual level permission setting defined at the manifest and call levels, and of course, the new NEP17 token standard, which simplifies token standards, and it can enable smart contracts to invoke custom functions when tokens are received. Most importantly is the price. I know a big stickler of Neo Legacy or Neo 2 was how much it costed to deploy a smart contract on the old Neo system. These fees have been lowered by up to 100 times as compared to before, so it is much easier and much cheaper for developers to launch smart contracts on Neo 3, so cost is no longer an issue. Of course, combined with the gas inflation mechanism and the burning of gas system fees, this sustainable economic model has been established. All these fees that are related to this new contract system are now adjustable through the on-chain governance mechanism, which provides additional benefit and resistance to market volatility on the price of gas. On that note, now that we've looked through all nine of the improvements to the Neo3 ecosystem, let's take a bit of a closer look to that governance piece. The governance allows Neo holders to cast their vote for a node candidate, these votes are then allocated to the respective council candidates, and then the top 20 candidates are voted in as members of the Neo Council. The top 7 council members with the highest number of votes will be elected as consensus nodes. These consensus nodes are responsible for processing transactions on the Neo network. If one consensus node fails, the next Neo Council member will take in line its place. For technical reasons, the votes are calculated every 21 blocks. And this period of time, as you may know, is called an epoch. The new distributed gas gives 10% to all Neo holders regardless of if they vote. 80% of the gas distribution goes to people who vote on the network and the remaining 10% goes to the 21 members of the Neo Council. As you can see here, you can actually see the current network status and how much each transaction or interaction on the blockchain will cost in Neo gas. And these can be changed at any moment depending on market conditions. One example is here back in September 14th of 2021 when the Neo Council voted to reduce the execution fee factor, the storage fee factor, and the network fee per byte, which actually reduced network fee transactions by 80% in cost. This shows one example of this new governance mechanism to show the changing of gas fees depending on these market conditions to allow Neo to always be at a good price to use, regardless of token price. This shows how powerful and strong NEO can be. And of course, having these elected nodes, the 21 candidate nodes with the most votes, makes NEO decentralized. Anyone can try to host a node and try to get elected into that top 21. This is a big upgrade for NEO and NEO3. There are quite a few wallets that you can use already to get started on NEO3. The ever more popular Neon wallet is a great wallet to get you started on Neo 3. As well, if you have any tokens or Neo or gas on Neo 2 or Neo Legacy, you can use the Neon wallet 
to transfer from the old Neo Legacy Network to the new Neo 3 Network. On top of that, Neon Wallet is great for using decentralized applications. Other wallets include the browser extension Neon Line, as well as O3 Wallet. As well as my favorite, Nash, will be getting Neo 3 support later on this year, so pretty excited for that one. And if you want to be a little bit more technical and run your own node, you have the Neo CLI or command line interface that you can use. I won't go into a ton of details on this one, but if you want to know more about it, you can head to the link in the description to docs.neo.org where you can learn more about the command line interface application or the GUI graphical user interface as another way to run a full node. Also, you can head to the documents.neo.org to learn more about the technicals behind these wallets and how they work, as well as some of the SDK tooling that you can use with Neo3. There is a lot to read up on on that site, and but there is a lot of great documentation if you want to get started on Neo3. It is the best place to go. The Neo3 ecosystem is already bustling, and it has started with such great projects, and more are definitely going to be coming. First of all, you have NFT projects starting up, the To The Moon universe, and the Humswap NFT projects that are both great projects on Neo3 that are both doing their own great thing in the NFT space. You also have the first NFT project that came from the Neo team themselves that had some Neo collectibles, and that was the first implementation of NFTs. And I am confident we're going to see plenty more NFTs on the Neo3 ecosystem. Then you also have NEP17 coins, which have also been growing and I'm sure is going to grow more. But some prominent ones we've been seeing lately are the meme coin nudes token, as well as the candy token, which is going to build its own sort of gamification on the Neo3 ecosystem. We also saw Ghost Market, which is the most prominent NFT marketplace for Neo right now, launch their token on the Neo3 platform. On top of that, it is important to note we have Flamingo, which is another token on the Neo3 ecosystem, but it is also currently the only DEX offering that is on Neo, and I've used it before, it works great, it's a pretty awesome platform to use. But on that note, we will probably see Humswap as the next DEX to be implemented on the Neo3 ecosystem. There's a lot to be excited about with Neo3. So that is an overview of the Neo3 upgrade and what it has brought to the cryptocurrency and blockchain space. It is pretty obvious that the Neo3 ecosystem is pretty awesome and I know that when more people start to develop on it and discover it and use it, more and more people will start to fall in love with just how easy it is to use and how great it is to develop on and on top of that, very cheap, quick transactions. That's really huge for a, a smart contract ecosystem. Make sure you like and comment what you thought of this video as well as what you think of the Neo3 upgrade. I would love to hear your thoughts below. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified for any of my future videos. Any relevant links for anything I have talked about today will be in the description below, as well as some places where you can buy Neo 2 or Neo 3 so you can get started in the Neo 3 ecosystem. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you all for watching. Bye now.